everyone's working so well together to, to, to insist that people stop. But if you could do me a real favour and just put teaching and learning at the top of that flip chart, again, like we did previously, we'll start to um, delay all of these ideas and, and share them across the um, across the sector and certainly with everyone in, in, in the room. Before we move on, though, it'd be really useful just to pick out one or two um, kind of key highlights from uh, a couple of uh, tables. So, Judith, can you pick out one um, over there? There was, there was a common theme there about awarding body help and the assistance you get from different awarding bodies and how people aren't afraid now to change awarding bodies yeah. uh, very much more than they would. There was a lot of talk about functional skills and accessibility of exams. Yeah. Again, awarding bodies are key there, but using those results analysis, question level analysis, results plus, yep. and the AQA, all that mass question level analysis really, really helps students now. So yeah. the awarding body, it seemed to me, are very key in that decision of, of who you choose and why. Yeah, and absolutely. I think you know, that's something to talk in the room about. Yeah, the body, no, why, I, why I agree. Why are you using this as a Why are you using yeah. it? So, Definitely. And the differences between the awarding bodies, that was really, really yeah. fundamental. Yeah, fantastic. And Marla, you're still standing, so clearly you need to add, add something at this point too. <laughs> <laughs> but anything that struck out from your table would be really helpful. I thought what was really interesting, actually, Diana shared with us, that um, in her uh, college early days, all of the staff, vocational staff, and um, any sort of teaching support staff sat at GCSE or functional school paper on a day on a CPD day. And not to point out necessarily the, the subject area, <laughs> But to create an empathetic situation where they understood what the students were, were going through and feeling and how they can understand how difficult the questions have become. Because like myself and yourself, it's a long time since we've sat through this. skills English level 2 reading paper um, to all of the managers and there was a, a lot of shocked faces we had no idea that it was this technical you know, due to the changes on the level 2 paper so it's a really good idea to get that empathetic vote from all people involved definitely definitely, definitely. so I'm just going to ask Piers just to finish off when we were um, going around and you were in your discussions on your tables is a copy of the feedback that the Google Sheet generates now that um, self-generates from a, a mail merge, but again, once you've completed the um, questionnaire and the feedback from today, you'll automatically get an email that will open up links to all of these documents, okay, but just so you've got a, a hard a paper copy in front of you. And importantly, um, Piers is going to talk through the questionnaire that he has trialled with around about 80 uh, students of his this year that's now going to be modelled across the maths and English team, and it'll tell you a little bit about why. Excellent, thanks very much, Sean. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, we we spoke about the feedback forms and the and the smart targets and how the students will set their own targets. And there's, as we can see, this this focus on on reflection for the students. It's not just about presenting them with stuff. Do this, do this, and then they sit a test and etc etc we really want them to understand um, why the success that they have is successful and and how to move that across into um, <clears throat> into what they need to go further and to succeed further um, and we want them to focus on what works in the classroom as well and what they enjoy and how we can use that in a, in a feedback loop into uh, influencing our planning as a team um, and looking forward towards the, the following year, and on and on. So, after the milestone assessment, or each milestone assessment has been done, um, and after the SMART targets have been set, then, as Trevor mentioned, I trialled this with a certain number of classes that I have, um, all of whom actually are GCSE classes at our Milburn Centre. Um, and I gave them this questionnaire. The questionnaire changed slightly 
as each milestone assessment went on. Um, but essentially, the questions were more or less the same. Um, <clears throat> the questions were designed not in any way to, to lead the students towards a certain type of answer. Um, the students also were encouraged to um, put their names on it if they want. They can be anonymous if they want. They can say whatever they like. Um, <clears throat> I, I did try to make it very, very sort of informal for them. Um, and I also said to them, this isn't about how you feel about English at school, how you feel about English in general. It's particularly what we do in our classroom. Um, so that was made quite clear as well. But we have, we have a set of questions. And some very, very interesting things have come out of that. And they are things which have gone on to influence further lesson planning and um, planning for the scheme of work for, for next year. And they've given us a lot of invaluable information about how students do feel about the milestone assessments, which has been very helpful within the team. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's a few different questions. For example, the first one, uh, which aspect of the learning in class do you like the most? They're encouraged to tell, uh, to tell us why. What would you like to do more of? Is, is there anything you would like to do less of? Um, the first two sets of those were quite open. And then the second two, or the final two, um, actually gave some multiple choice answers, um, of which a report is then going to be put together. The first two already have been used to create a report. Um, essentially what we found from that, and Trevor spoke earlier on about the collaborative learning in classrooms, the whiteboards around the room, each student uh, is encouraged to work with others on the table, everybody essentially, I mean I say to my students in class, when we're doing various tasks, copy each other, just take each other's ideas, use everything that everybody has. Um, because I know very well the, 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 the feeling that the students can have when they sit there in the classroom and they think, oh, I don't know what this is all about, but they, they, they don't know who to ask, they don't want to put their hand up. So it's all about sharing these ideas. And out of these we came, uh, came the information that the students really, really enjoy that. They find it very helpful. Um, I like a lot of discussion in class. Again, for the same type of reasons, but for purposes of Essentially for purposes of analysis, without getting too much into it, what we found again through the milestone assessments and through these is the, the, the things that the students find most challenging is the aspect of analysis and the answers they need to produce uh, to successfully pass GCSE English. And these have led to a lot of information on that. One, one comment I would like to um, give you from, from one of these, and some of the students' comments that have gone on to these uh, have actually gone across to um, our West Suffolk College marketing department and those are going to be used, as I understand, to everyone, some posters around the college. Um, the students, who, uh, have some of the students, I might add, have agreed to be photographed um, and they, they understand that they're going to go on, you know, on the website around the college, etc. But one of the comments on there was, um, do you feel you've improved since the last assessment? Milestone assessment one, so this is just after the first half term of the year, and a certain student of mine wrote, Yes, I do, because I now come back after break. Um, which, I kind of, I read it first of all, I was like, oh, I almost said his name there. I was like, oh, oh, all right, yeah. But then I actually sat and thought about it a little bit. And um, I really thought that at that particular first stage in the year, I thought that was a pretty positive thing. This is a student who had been pretty disengaged, and now he, and he reflected for himself that he's now coming back after break, and he sees that as something that he's improved upon. Um, I'm trying to think, I feel like there's something else I really wanted to say on this. Trevor, could you jog my memory? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, it's right there behind me. Sorry, yeah. Um, in terms of reflection, and going back again to the Google document, literally the main point of this, sorry about that, guys. Um, the, going back to the Google document, something that we were able to then see, and to see very clearly and to prove, uh, was that the students who had taken part in these questionnaires and who had further reflected uh, even after their own smart targets had been set, um, those students um, were on average 8.5% higher in terms of their marks um, on further assessments than others who, who had not had that bit of self-reflection. Um, something which I thought was quite telling and uh, very interesting and, and as such has led 
So this becoming standard practice for, for the coming year okay. through maths and English yep. across the college. Yes, indeed. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, <coughs> we're going to move on now to uh, our next presentation, but just like um, some of the information with regards to CSPAR, all of these documents will be made available once the um, feedback has been garnered from um, everyone in the room. So you get an automatic email with all of this information on. Again, in terms of a, a, a quick win, we, we know anecdotally, we knew anecdotally that this would be the, the, the response. But the in-depth analysis now has been able to, for us to be able to prove that this has taken place. So that level of additional reflection from the students has driven uh, an increase in an upturn in, in their results. So we're waiting with bated breath and hoping that that also proves the case once they actually sit on exam. And we are actually going to question them um, further actually on exam day to kind of create that full uh, closure to that uh, feedback loop. But without any further ado, I'm going to hand her over to Rachel. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you want to stand up and sit down and wiggle your toes, you're very welcome. <laughs> we've already been sitting in a hot, stuffy room for quite some time. Um, my name is Rachel Bose. I'm Curriculum Director for Healthcare and Early Years here at the college. And I'm going to talk to you today about developing maths and English within vocational teaching. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking that FE provision across the country have turned themselves into maths and English factories. It is a fact of life. Maths and English is an integral part of every student's study programme, unless they have been lucky enough to achieve those maths and English grades at school. And I think four or five years ago, when we had students coming to join us, they were coming because they were interested in vocational things that we had on offer. Um, hair and beauty, art and design, construction, automotive, healthcare and early years. And that was what made them tick. Now, our mass and English teams up here are epic. They, they truly are epic. But they have two hours a week if they are teaching GCC English. They have one hour a week if they're teaching functional skill, and they will have three hours a week for GCSE maths. And we're trying to support over 500 students who are reluctant mathematicians or English scholars with the best will in the world and for a multitude of different reasons to get them that elusive C grade, that elusive grade four in 32 teaching weeks. It's a huge ask of any, anyone, even an ethics department. So it's so important that the vocational team say, do you know what, we're about maths and English too. So what my role this morning, I'm going to talk, there's two parts to it really. I'm going to talk to you about how our vocational teams make maths and English their business from day one. And it truly is from day one. And I'll give you some ideas of, of what we think is best practice and what's working certainly within healthcare and early years. We, and also I will talk a little bit about how we are embedding maths and English within the compulsory work experience element of what the students are doing on their vocational courses. Both of those aspects are absolutely vital to underpin the actual maths and English teaching that students are getting in their maths and English classes. Okay, thanks, Trevor. So, we talk, Trevor introduced CSPAR, and the very first thing I would say is that our Connect activities in our classroom, so every session that the students come into in a vocational lesson, that first five or ten minutes, getting their brains ready, creative juices flowing, ready to go, we choose maths and or English activities for our Connect, whatever it is we are doing. So if I, and I teach a level three safeguarding class to second year childcare students, and a connect activity might be a table of the child protection registers from last year across the country, and I'll ask them to present that in a mathematical way. So they might choose to do a bar, bar chart, they might do a pie chart, but they have to start thinking about percentages and how they would represent tabular information in some kind of graph. So yeah, five or ten minutes. They don't even notice that they're doing maths, but they are practicing those skills. 
Um, we do a lot of things with anagrams. So if your topic for the day is communication in childcare, you'll write those words up on the board, and it's like a packet of um, Haribo's for the person that gets the most words out of that. And you use that time then to sort your register out, make sure your teaching resources are all right, ready to go, and the students don't even notice that they're doing it. The maths and English department here have created hundreds of starter activities, literally hundreds. So any, any staff that are stuck for ideas, all of those resources are readily available and they literally are a quick print out this page, you've got something for your students to do. But, I said we, do, we get involved from day one. What you've got here is actually a coat of arms, you just click for me. Yeah. Um, in induction week, so the very first day that we've got all of our students in classrooms for the very first time, we're saying, hey, welcome to West Suffolk College. You've come to do healthcare in early years and you're gonna have a great time. One of the t um, things that we do is we give them all a blank coat of arms and we ask them to decorate it, to fill the boxes that says something about them, stuff that's important to them. Um, and and then I, I've got a couple of examples to show you from our level one students in a, in a moment. But the students just do this and then we get them to sort of show one another and talk about it. So they're getting to know each other as a group. But we then, I'll just click again, my glamorous assistant. It's an icebreaker activity, but it binds functional skills and vocational qualification from day one because the tutors will then use that activity with um, assessment paperwork that's been devised by the English team to assess everybody at level one functional skills speaking and listening. So you, the vocational teams take responsibility for actually carrying out the English speaking and listening assessment for our functional skills. And they can assess students at level one and at level two. If you can go to the next slide, if you can go to the assessment paperwork for me, thank you. There was a bit of resistance from vocational staff. What have I got to do English assessments? I'm not an English teacher. But you'll see from the paperwork, and, and as Trevor is probably getting bored of saying, there will be access to all of these documents um, after the event. His office is struggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy, um, yes, please, and the, the mark sheet as well. Actually, yeah. it, it, it's not an onerous task at all, and it is part of what you're actually doing with the students in, in induction anyway. That's why we adopted it. We want them to be, and this, there's one of the um, coats of arms here, and this is actually one of our students where English is not a first language, so she's got the flag of her nation, she says her family is important, YouTube, and was, there was some writing in the top box which I thought perhaps I didn't need to put for <laughs> public display, but um, there we go. So <coughs> there is tutor guidance for the discussion activities, um, so they get students working in small groups, talking to a group about their coat of arms, and why they chose to put the things on there, um, and then, if they're doing level two as well, they, they try and do something a little bit more formal, so probably working together and then doing a presentation. So that's the tutor guidance that's available, but then the mark sheet has just been made so easy for staff to do. So you can see, I just want to, oh, this bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be brilliant. Okay. So you can see from a, from a vocational team point of view, they can tick where they feel the student is at. There are, there are more questions on there where they can annotate how they've mm -hmm. coped with the presentation, how they were able to communicate effectively through speaking and listening. But that can all be done in induction week. And we just <coughs> put it in a file. Now some of the students that do this, 
might end up sitting in a GCSE classroom because once we get their levels right and so on and so forth, they might end up in a GCSE classroom. That doesn't matter because we, we're using the induction activity. The purpose for the vocational teams is about allowing students to gain in confidence to feel safe with their new group of students and to start finding out about one another. This is just a, an, an added an add-on that really helps the, the speaking and listening team. So then once groups are established and we know whether people are doing level two or entry three, level one, English, at that point we can then pull out the assessment information that we've got already and pass that to the English team and, and to exams. Mm -hmm. So very straightforward, thank you Trevor. We can just click on that one, just have a little look at Thank you. It might be worth just saying at this point that we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, had our um, standards verifier visit from Edexcel looking at our level one and level two speaking and listening. So they're now putting those visits in um, every two years. And we discussed how we'd adapted our paperwork specifically for vocational tutors to be able to um, really um, reflect what the students have done in their assessments. And the bit that the vocational tutors really struggle with is the centre summative box that you have, which is just an open box for people to write in. Now, as an English tutor, you know what to write in there because you're so used to it. As a vocational tutor, um, what we did is we, we scaffolded those uh, boxes asking specific questions. So it made it much easier for them to think of the good examples and the good examples of practice to write in them. Um, and Edexcel were really pleased that we'd done that um, because it just showed that we were adapting to the needs of the college, the needs of the students, um, and still giving good practice, um, basically for the paperwork to assess their speaking and listening. So um, we were, you know, we're a bit worried about, you know, what we've messed around with your paperwork, but actually they were they were quite supportive in that and wrote that in our feedback as well. So I mean, this is just another example. I did get the student's permission to use it, so I didn't try and blank blank out her name at the bottom. But again, a, a young lady who um, is Polish, so her you know 